I accidentally killed an old woman. Now she won't leave me alone. Written by Dr. Heinous. I'm the worst human being in the world, and now I'm being punished. I wouldn't expect you to understand why I did what I did. You've never been in my situation, but it's hard to think when you see something like that to have caused such horrifying destruction. I only had a couple of drinks. It was an office Christmas party. How could I not? It's not my freaking fault. It would have been fine if it wasn't raining and I didn't make it rain. What am I saying? Of course, it's my fault. Why was she even on the road? It's like 3 a.m. and she's like 90 or some shit. I struggled to stand due to my drunken stupor. Looking down in the ditch, wondering how in the hell her frail little body made it through the windshield. None of her limbs in the position they should be. Her head laid next to her body, mouth wide open, like she was screaming. I don't want to go to prison. It was an accident. There's no point to call emergency services, right? I'm fine. My car can drive and she's... Well, she's dead. There is no emergency. I didn't pass a single car as I drove home, leaving the mangled Prius and an even more mangled corpse in the ditch. That night, I fell into the deepest, most peaceful sleep I ever had. The next morning, I went about my usual routine. Shower. Ah, nothing better for a hangover than a hot shower. Breakfast. I've got to stop getting frosted flakes. They barely frost them anymore. Brush teeth. Why do my gums bleed when I floss? Is that what gingivitis is? Ugh, I'll make an appointment next week. My reflection stared back with judgment. You killed a woman. You killed a woman and left her in a fucking ditch. You're a piece of shit. You're a fucking monster that deserves to die. But I'm not in prison. It's Saturday, so I need to go get groceries. I haven't looked at the news. I'm afraid to. Are they looking for a gray F-150? I sure as hell shouldn't drive mine. I guess I'll just have ramen noodles. A mysterious popping sound breaks the silence. What is that damn noise? I keep seeing shadows move. I can't make out the shapes, just abstract forms. I can't shake the feeling of being watched. I feel its gaze forcing chills down my spine. I see her now. First it was the silhouette of her headless mangled body on the other side of the shower curtain. Then out of the corner of my eye. I can't not see her now. She is everywhere I see. In the corner of every room. In every reflection. In every peripheral. I hear her disfigured form popping as she paces at the foot of my bed as I pretend to sleep. The endless sound of her disconnected and broken bones rubbing against each other. <sighs> the popping is louder now. Constant like she's circling me at all times. What do you want? I'm sorry, okay? It was an accident! I turned to stare at the crippled form for the first real time. How can you even stand? Her displaced and jagged bones that protruded out of her thin paper-like skin somehow supported its own weight. I stared into the eyes that bulged from the severed head held in the figure's arms. Do you want me to kill myself? Is that what you want? I'll gladly do it at this point! I grabbed my pistol, 
cocked it, and put it to my head. I can't live like this! I can't live with you! You fucking bitch! I'd rather just end it! The trigger simply clicks as I pull it. I open my eyes. The figure continuously popping as it leaves its corner in my direction. I pull my magazine. It's full. There's one in the chamber. I try again. The gun clicks as I repeatedly pull the trigger. Why am I not dead? Is this not what you want? I fix my aim on the monstrosity, which is now three feet from me. I pull the trigger. The loud gunshots fill my living room. The bullets pass through her. I drop to my knees before hearing her popping frame standing over me. I bury my head in between my knees. Please, just kill me. Let it be over. Just fucking kill me! St. Clair's County Sheriff's Department! I wake up in a puddle of my own vomit, just as the police burst through my door. Before I knew it, the police had me flipped over and cuffed. A female cop screams as she makes her way through the doorway. It was when they got me on my feet that I saw what had filled her with such terror. The body of the old woman lay just across the room. Still and broken on the floor, her head held tightly in her hands. They labeled the wreck a drunken accident and me a sick son of a bitch. I was charged for manslaughter and got a 25 year sentence after they added on some time for moving the body. The thing is, they had no physical evidence I transported the body. No blood in my truck. No blood on my clothes. None of my DNA on the body. How was she really there? How did her body leave the ditch that I left her in? I know I'll never know. But I have a lot of time to think about it in here. You know... I look around and see rapists and murderers, but honestly, I feel safe. Safe from the true evils of the world that I know exist. These bars may keep me in, but they also keep other things out. <laughs> A popping noise echoes out from the corner of the cell. <laughs> <laughs>